Hello fellow colorists, Jody here. Hope you're having a great week. Today's video is going to be one of my altered pages. I do an altered page every month. So I'm going to be working out of Joanna Basford's World of Flowers. It has quite a few wallpaper pages, which I like to alter, but instead of a wallpaper page today, we are actually going to be doing these four different vignettes with the flowers behind them. I have seen other people do this um, and I thought it was a really stunning final effect. So I'm not sure where I saw it. Uh, it's been a couple of years since this book has been out, but I want to do this as a stained glass. And so I'm going to do uh, that by adding the stained glass using a stencil. You could also just uh, freehand draw it. Um, I have a stained glass stencil, so I'm trying to keep this series fairly easy for everyone to uh, follow along and get some ideas on what they have in their own stash that they could possibly use to create it. So I'm going to take a mechanical pencil and I'm going to add the draw on using the stencil, the stained glass area. And then I'm going to take a waterproof uh, ink just in case I want to use some waterproof medium on that. And I'm going to uh, use probably an India ink type pen so that it also doesn't bleed through the paper. Um, so that's the plan. If that's something that you'd like to watch unfold, then please stay tuned and let's get started. So as I mentioned, I have a stencil. I received a pack of stencils uh, I purchased off of Amazon a couple of years ago. And I'm just going to, I'm going to start with a pencil in case I uh, make some errors or I don't like the looks of it. I also have a eraser here. And I'm going to start with this one here. So I'll just zoom you in a little bit. I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm just going to lay this stencil down and I may grab a piece of washi tape so that I can uh, adhere the stencil down. It's just any old washi tape will do. I actually have some Scentsy washi tape, so I'll just use that. And I suggest washi tape so that your stencil doesn't move. And if you get called away, like I sometimes do get called away for my dogs and stuff like that, um, then you haven't lost your spot on the page. So I'm just going to line up the bottom corner with the stencil and I'm going to tape it down. And as long as I like the look of that, I'll, I'll, and I do, I'll just start to do a trace. Then once I've finished tracing, I'll pick the stencil up and move it upwards, but making sure that um, it's still looking like it belongs. So that's one thing you do have to kind of uh, watch when you are using a stencil that the uh, pattern makes sense. So I'm just going to lightly draw in. Now the areas, if you don't want them to be black, you could make them silver by using a gel pen or a water-based marker of some kind. So I'll speed the uh, page up and because uh, you've got the gist of what I'm doing here. If you're not concerned about um, the pencil lines and you think you can go just straight to ink, you can also do that just going over the pencil lines here. Now be careful when you're getting close to the flower. The flower is part of the stained glass, so you want to not draw through the flower. Okay, so I'm going to pull the tape up and I'm going to move this up. So 
And I'm going to complete some of these with a ruler. Okay, so now I'm kind of starting back at square one, I'm trying to place it how I think it would be interesting. I like how this side is lining up. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to finish this area here. I'm just going to continue on and at the end I will come back and add Okay, that's how it's looking right now. I'm actually going to give it a minute to dry, um, just so I don't smear anything. There is no bleed through on the other side of the page, so that's excellent. Not really super pleased with this area, but that's okay. Um, let me uh, come in. There. Just change that up a little bit. So that's step one in our process is uh, add the stained glass stencil part. Step two will be filling in the uh, stained glass lines and then we'll start to color and make it look like glass. So along with uh, doing an altered page, I'm also trying to use up my stash. So I have pulled out a India ink uh, marker that I got in a subscription box a few years ago that I've never used. It's by Higgins and uh, it's black. So I'm just shaking it up. It has a uh, felt tip that uh, you need to prime. So I will do that. Okay. The tip has been primed and we will start at the top corner and work our way down. I'm going to put a piece of parchment underneath my hand so that I'm not smearing anything. So let me grab that. And until I know what the feathering is like, I'm just going to be lightly going because I don't want it to go past the lines. And uh, I can always come in with a, another pen to do some more detail to get closer to the lines, but I don't want to because it is bleeding out a bit, so I just need to be careful. And it's just black, so even a black uh, pencil crayon or colored pencil will help fill in any areas where I'm not getting close enough to the line. It's better to go under the line than over the line. Especially in this case where it's a stained glass. Let's check to make sure it's not bleeding through. Oh dear, it is. Okay, I need to halt this and we're going to try a little trick that I have learned and that is taking a black color pencil. So let's grab my polychromos. I'm going to grab a black and I'm going to do put a layer of pencil down first before I do the India ink and we'll see if that protects the paper. Because quite often that does and uh, I should have tested that at the back of my book on the color 
tester sheet beforehand. So while I'm doing this, I might as well fill in these areas. I like the look of the India ink. Um, it's solid. So let's try the India ink now on top of, so that will be here on the page. So right now, just so you can see, um, you can see some, let me zoom you out a bit. You can see some ghosting up here. Ghosting up here from the India ink that's bleeding through. So we'll see if it's gonna bleed through now that I have this down. And it's not bleeding through anymore. So right here. So right here is where I just colored and it's not bleeding through. So if you're having a problem with bleed through, uh, certainly test it out at the back of your book first. But uh, that's one thing you can do is lay down a colored pencil because India ink shouldn't bleed through, but obviously it has. So I'll just clean up these edges and then I will do I could also switch to a different black, but I'm trying to use up my stash as well. But if using up your stash ruins a page, then that's not uh, <gasps> that's not ideal either. Okay, so I'm going to quickly color this all with my polychromos, just one layer, and then I'm going to do the India ink. So I'll be back in a flash. Just checking in to show you how it's going so far. And let's move some items off the page. Here's how it's looking. And on the flip side, so that you know it's not bleeding through, this is how it's looking. So we've only got the ghosting uh, or the bleed through up here. The rest that I've done down here uh, has not bled through. So the uh, tip of Covering your paper first with a uh, layer of pencil before putting down your ink seems to be working. So I'll uh, keep working on that. I think it's looking good. I think it also would have looked really nice with silver. So what I might do is not do every single stained glass window the same. I also have a couple of different stencils and I may try out a different stencil on the next one. So uh, this altered page may be altered even further. Okay, we're ready to go on to the next step. I have pulled out my uh, Sarah Renee Clark color cube, number one, and I have selected palette 150. So it has um, a pop of yellow in there, kind of a, a sienna yellow, and uh, also some blues, a dark blue, and three other shades of blue. So I thought that that would go good for the uh, stained glass plus the uh, flower would be kind of that color in the center. So I'm going to use some watercolor mediums. I'm going to go and select some ink tense pencils. So, and I've also, uh, for the green, for the flower, I have selected a Kiritake Zig Clean Color water-based marker. So I've swatched out my four blues. I have the smaller set of ink tents. So I've got uh, 900, which is iris blue, uh, 1,000 1, is bright blue, then we've got 1,100 deep indigo, and the last blue is sea blue, which is 1,200. So I looked at those blues, and I haven't used the deep indigo, this 
this one so I'll set that aside for now but I have used some of these others then I swatched out a yellow and then I also swatched out uh, mustard and I like the mustard better so that's this color here I thought that that went almost identical to that color so keeping the color palette in mind to make my uh, selections of colors a little bit easier and I've done a few areas on the page and we will complete more together so for starters our lightest blue is 900 and the light ones I want definitely around the flower and in the center so how I'm doing that I'll zoom you in and we'll do a lighter blue around here I'm taking the furthest area away I'm lightly scumbling down some pigment on directly onto the paper keeping it mostly to the edges where the uh, black is just putting a couple of light coats down not digging into the paper so that there won't be left behind any grooves taking a water brush with a tiny the kiritake uh, water brush sorry about that and i'm just going to activate it and then as it's liquefying i'm dragging it to the center so i'll end up with a darker blue around the edge and then lighter and we'll let that dry before uh, adding any more ink tents once dried is permanent so i can come on top of it and add more layers once it's dry here are a couple other spots where i've already put it down so you'll see there and then along the edges I have used a deeper blue so that is 1000 and that was the bright blue so we'll do one of those and we're going to go deeper there and then just light out so I haven't got any pigment over here at all make sure my brush is clean liquefying it and then just scumbling motions draw it out and that's what I'm going to do so that one side will be a little bit darker and once it's all finished if I don't like the way it's looking I can come back with either a more ink tents or B some colored pencil on top a stained glass so it is, should be kind of transparent which is why I went with the ink tents as a watercolor medium I thought that would I first thought about using graphitant but graphitant gives it kind of a bit of a gritty dirty look and I don't want dirty windows <laughs> so while I love my graphitant this was just not the right time for it so I don't want to do items too close together uh, but this is a wide enough edge in between that I could probably just work right beside it but uh, we're just going to move down the page a little bit in fact these two areas are dry so I'll move up here Keeping your pencil really light is the key. And if you're concerned that there isn't enough pigment to drag out, just lightly, lightly cover. And remember we want the darker pigment to be along the edges of the black. So and for the flower here, I have uh, going to use the mustard. And right now I've just done the outside leaves around there. And I did a heavier coat of the pigment down before activating it. And so now I'll just do... So I want it, when I want a heavier... A coat or a stronger coat then I do the entire petal if I'm trying to make something light 
then I'll just do one area of the petal and I'll drag the pigment out. But in this case, I want a strong color evenly throughout the whole petal. So, so there we go. Does not take very much water. I am not squeezing my brush at all. And I'm just dabbing it off in between. Now I want this petal to be a little bit lighter than the petal behind. So I'm doing less pressure. Here is a lighter color than the darker one behind. And at the end, I can always deepen up some shadows, but that's, that's the intent. Now I just did this one, so I'm gonna leave that. And I'll do this one. And if I want it deeper, the underneath to deeper, I'm gonna just do that. There you go, so that's how the uh, flower is gonna turn out. If I want a little bit darker at the start, then you, a little bit heavier application. And that's where you wanna kinda push your pigment towards too. If you want it to be darker in an area. I'm not wetting the tip of the pencil at this point because um, I want to keep being able to color. I may do that later when I need to deepen up some shadows areas or something, but right now I'm using the pencil dry. So if I know I want an area to be darker, I'll do that last and leave the pigment down there, not dragging it away. Okay, that's how I'm going to do uh, the rest of those. And let's move back on to some blue. So tell me in the comments below, do you use ink tense pencils in your Johanna Basford books or some of your other books? Now, you remember this paper is not treated, so we are doing straight on paper. So it's not going to move um, as much, and I wanted that as well, because I don't, I want it to actually stay where I'm putting it. I don't want a lot of flow. Remember that the Kiritake is also water soluble, so I don't want to be getting a lot of water near the stem, which is already done in green. So this area closest up here I think would be darker. So I'll do darker around the edge and then the center will be light. So each piece of the stained glass you'll kind of look at and decide which uh, shade of blue you want it to be. I have the darker ones on the outside and the lighter ones on the inside. See how the whole flower is kind of looking. So in this case, if I want to add a bit more blue, I can go and do the tip method and touch my wet brush directly to the pencil tip to pick up pigment direct. And I do that usually at the end when I've done everything on the page and then I wanna touch up and add a little bit more pigment here and there. That's when I will do the tip method. I'll uh, put you back onto um, the music and I will continue on with uh, variegating some colors here. For this particular large block here, I'm going to actually take two colors. So I'm going to take the 1000 bright blue and then the 900 iris blue 
and because uh, I want the iris blue to be at the top and it'll kind of merge down and that'll bring the two blues together since this is such a large one. So I'm going to do the lighter blue first and the darker blue. And just merge the two. We'll do that a couple of more times because we're getting closer. Uh, we're kind of like on the second layer going in, so I'll be doing more merging. Um, I'm going to leave this area, move up here. So let's zoom you in a little bit more. So I've got the darker blue and then the lighter blue. And then it'll just meet in the middle. I always wet my light blue first and then drag it down into the darker blue. Because you want the darker blue to stay kind of in one area and the lighter blue to meet it. There you go. So that's two colors and because they are both blue and not terribly off in shade, it's not jarring, they blend nicely and uh, that's how we're going to do that. I'll continue the rest off camera and be back when we're done that. Here's how it's looking after the first coat. We'll just let that dry just to show you that there's no bleed through on the other side of the ink tents, so that's great. Um, so I'm going to be using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pen. Uh, it is a very fine tip brush with actual bristles and it is also um, water-based ink so it will not bleed through and so while we're waiting for the ink tense blue to dry we'll do a few more leaves and the smaller leaves I'm just doing full strength the bigger leaves I'll do some blending My brush is clean, and then I'll do this. Moves more if you've treated the paper. But it will blend out some with water. You can also blend it out with a lighter color of Zig. So I can also do that. 45. So let's just do that here. So we'll put some down and then blend it out with the lighter color. Can be a little bit messy because you're coming in and blending it out. Okay, and that's the green. We'll come back up to the flower head and we will do some more ink tents. A little bit darker on the leaves that are behind and light on the front leaves. A little darker on the base. So I can do all the coloring and then come back and and uh, do all the watery as well, if that's more your style. Just remember not to uh, do too many items close together because the paper really, it's not watercolor paper, so it's not meant to have a bunch of water on it. Okay, make sure my brush is clean of green. I'm gonna do the darker area last so again so if you want it lighter at the edges do that pigment and then come down to the darker area wipe it off you 
And you're kind of scumbling or right, working in circles so that I'm activating all of the pigment. You do need to activate all of the pigment for the ink tents to remain permanent. If you don't, um, then the next time you come back with water, it will reactivate. So you do need to be careful. And we'll let that dry and we will come back in. So now we can go and scan out. And before we do the center of the flower, we can come through and think if we need to uh, put any more blue down. And if you like, we can grab a darker blue. So this was the bright indigo. And if we want an actual darker than that, then we can go either 1200 or 1100. So I'm gonna go with the darkest blue and I'm just going to uh, use the tip method. So I'm just going to pick it up from the tip just a little bit and I'm just going to go along the edge. This way I might want a little bit darker. So anywhere where there might be a little bit of white showing through that you want to just darken up a bit. And that's just on the very edges here. And once we're done with the dark blue, we can come in with the, the lighter blue. So that's the lightest blue is the Iris 900. And we'll do the tip method because we might want to fix some shading. Looks a little harsh in a few areas. Okay, I think that looks good. We can uh, do the center of that now. So the center, I think I'm going to do a darker brown. So I've got a couple of browns. We've got three different browns. We're going to put them down on paper first to see how they are. So this is 1800. Nineteen hundred. So this one is willow. That might be the one to use. Or this is bark, which is two thousand. And I don't have a brown on here, but that's okay. I'm only adding one color. So that's quite bright orangey. That's not bad. Might actually combine these two, the 19 and the two. Okay. So I want it just a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go um, with the dark brown around the very edge. Where the shadowy bits would be. And then I'm going to come with the lighter brown, so that's the willow in the rest of it. And just lightly. And then we're going to activate the center, get that all activated before moving to the very edge. Now I'll go to the edge and just activate around the edge without dragging it into the center. Make sure it's all activated. 
wipe off my brush and then come in and lightly mix it too. They won't move a lot, but uh, there. So that's how that's looking. And I may take the darker brown, which is the, the lighter brown, sorry, which was the willow, and do touch the tip and just do a little bit around start of the flower just to deepen up that uh, where I had the mustard before. Okay we'll let that dry and then we'll likely come back in with some more mustard and uh, blend that out a bit more. So that's the another you know key point is make sure you're letting your layers of ink tents dry in between just like you would say a neo color two or something. While the center area is drying, taking a look back at our color palette, uh, I have pulled out my Pit Artist brush pen in, in Danthro Blue 247 and I'm going to do the background around here. And I'm not going to use ink tents but this still is a um, brush uh, India ink uh, type of media and it'll just allow me it has a firmer tip and it'll allow me to get um, and do the background around this a little bit easier. We'll start in the corner putting a piece of paper. Do these dark you have all these dark little areas. This is quite an intricate page, so there's lots, lots going on. So a color palette will help keep the page cohesive as well. So this is a fiber tip pen, kind of like a felt pen, but it is India ink. And I'm just going to be doing all of these little sections. Sticking with the color palette, I have uh, selected Sky Blue 146. And I'll likely use some of the yellow uh, on the uh, butterfly or the moth here from our color palette, which is right here. And it's palette number 150 in case I hadn't mentioned that earlier. Okay, that's how it's going to look. Um, I'll keep doing it. It's a little bit um, tedious, but it goes much faster with a uh, felt type pen then with a few coats of polychromos so uh, it's going down quicker but it is also quite time consuming and tedious so while we know what we're going to do there we'll come back and we'll look work a little bit more on the flower so we're going to grab the mustard color and I am going to uh, just go right off the tip and I'm just going to deepen this area again. I had just gone over it with some brown earlier. So now I'm just going to do the flower a little bit more dimension.
And for the final uh, dimension, I will come back in with an actual colored pencil and give it a bit more. But now we've got a couple of more layers of uh, pigment down to work with. So I'll leave you there and I'll come back when most of this uh, frame area is complete and then we will do the finer details. Progress update as to where we are. I have completed the outside edge. I have also done the leaves down below for the leaves. I have grabbed a couple of Pit Artist pens in green and I've used the uh, yellow olive tone greens um, to try and uh, be less jarring than a bright green. I have done the rest of the flowers in yellow and oh, the brown center. I've started the moth up at the top with the same colors from the flower here. And now I have started to go around the outside with a gold sparkle pop. So that's where we are right now. So I'm doing the uh, iron work or the filigree type work. I've also put a little bit of sparkle pop in the center of this flower. And I will put some sparkle pop on these flowers here in their center and outline the moth. So those are the finishing touches. And then I will come in with some uh, polychromos pencils and deepen up this flower here. So let's just zoom in a little bit while we work on, I'll do the moth. And I was debating between going with silver or gold, but I decided that the gold sparkle pop went better with the yellow. And uh, so that's, oh, and I've missed a part right here. We'll do the outside edge first. Taper has warped a bit, um, but it will flatten out once we've put a uh, closed the book up and set something heavy on top. It's just it's lifting up quite a bit, um, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, will be the only one that I do in this video, this stained glass. And I will do other, possibly other videos for the other ones, or I may, uh, depending on if I decide to make them very different or just similar. So if I do have some interesting ideas and do something different, then I will uh, film another video, but you will see, eventually see this in completed pages. I am quite excited about altering a page a month. Um, it's really challenging my uh, creativity to look at a page and look at it differently. And uh, I think that that's a good way for me to knock off some of these wallpaper pages. There seem to be quite a few flower wallpaper pages in this book, The World of Flowers. So we'll uh, get a few more done. Okay, I will keep doing that. As you can see, this is curled up, but like I said, it'll come back down. So you know what I'm going to do there. So we'll just leave that and we'll move on to the polychromos pencils to do some of the flower. Okay, I've grabbed two polychromos pencils, uh, 183 light yellow ochre and 185 Naples yellow. And I'm just gonna blend out this center bit here a little bit. I'm not going to do the tips. I'm going to leave those light. I'm just adding a little bit more warmth to the flower.
The paper is um, fine. I'm not having a problem going over top of the Inktense pencil here at all. It, uh, it isn't rough and it hasn't added any extra tooth or anything, so it feels fine. Okay, now I'm going to take the uh, light yellow ochre and I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. Although it's getting... It's almost time for a pencil extender. I'm just going to deepen up these areas. Where there would be some shadow. very very bottom so not bringing it up just deepening that very very bottom area closest to the center of the flower up the shadow a little bit. If you have already completed this page, uh, post your picture to Instagram and tag me so I can see how you completed it. It'd be fun to see how others have completed the same page. I like that. So my Instagram is J.I. Colorist. So it's actually J.I. underscore Colorist on Instagram. So. And I'm going to take a cream, 102, and just blend that out. So there's no harsh line there. I'm not sure what flower this is, but I've kind of colored it similar to a, a sunflower, and sunflowers are my one of my very favorite flowers, so I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but that's what we went with. So I think that's it. I'm not going to uh, tinker with it too much more. You can always keep doing more and sometimes uh, that isn't good. So I'm also going to take my Sparkle Pop and just put a dot. There's a black dot already on the end of each petal. I'm just going to cover that black dot with a Sparkle Pop. So that it's a little less noticeable. There we go. I'll zoom you back out. So I will continue on with the uh, adding the sparkle pop. Um, the other item I may do is come in with a blue. So I'm going to come in with light phalo blue and Just anywhere that there may be a little bit of, of a transition that I want to up change. If there's any white of the paper that's kind of showing what I didn't want it to. So very, very lightly. I'm not just adding a titch of color. And that's also an artist technical term. <laughs> so I don't want to redo everything, just a few spots here and there. Thank you for coming along on this journey with me for another altered page. I think that um, 
adding the stained glass really uh, changes it up a bit. I haven't decided if I'm going to come in and do a couple of white or silver lines um, along the stained glass or not. I'm going to just leave it for now and, and think about it. I find if I leave things and come back I have a clearer picture. And because um, sometimes if you've been working on it for hours you, you, you need to step away. At least I do. Another thing that uh, is useful is if you take a picture of your picture that you've just finished and look at the picture and you'll notice things uh, that you didn't notice uh, with kind of your naked eye. So I find uh, if I take a picture and I look at it and it's like, oh, I missed this or this is not the right shade or, you know. So that might be a tip for you. But I think I'm, uh, I'm happy. I don't want to add any um, light yellow or anything to this. I want it to stay quite uh, light blue. If anything, I would go and add a bit of white. Um, if there's any spots that uh, need to be blended out. But for now, I think that I'm just going to leave it as is and uh, finish off the rest of the edges with the Sparkle Pop and call this one a done. So I will keep going and then I will come back uh, with a quick show of you of what it looks like when I'm finished. Here's a last look at how the page has turned out. Uh, reminder that it was uh, this was our color palette and the gold really worked for the color palette as well. Um, so if we do add any other add anything else uh, to line wise it probably will stay with gold to stay with the color palette. So this is how it's turned out. I'm pleased with it. Let's take a look on the other side to see how much bleed through we had, if any, for the ink tents. And a little bit of, remember, the bleed through from the Indie ink up here, but for the rest of it, um, and a little bit right here, uh, for the most part though, very good. This page is definitely uh, savable, so I'm glad that we caught it uh, right away. And I should have done a test page at the back of the book, so my bad for that. So, But I do like how it's turned out. Thank you for coming along with me. And until our next video, I hope you're doing something colorful and creative. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.